from a UK point of view, the most important thing to us is uh, working with and on behalf of our employers. So we offer a, a process of consultation. So we bring together the employers into, into groups to discuss what their current needs are for skills, but more importantly, what their future and emerging needs are. Uh, and we take those back uh, to our individual organisations, and that's how we go about developing the skills and standards for the future. So uh, a lot of consultation. We also use technology quite innovatively. So uh, we have an approach of uh, surveys, we use social media, uh, polls, those kind of things. So we're constantly checking and re-understanding uh, what it is that they need now and in the future. So the UK Skills Federation brings together all of the sector skills councils in the UK. Each individual sector skills council in its own right represents uh, a various industry, so that's uh, engineering and manufacturing, or hospitality, or IT. The UK Skills Federation as a whole is responsible for collectively taking the expertise in each of those individual organisations and helping transfer that knowledge both in the UK and abroad. Um, so from our partners' point of view, it's a single point of contact for them to go to. I think increasingly the UK skills environment is driven by employer engagement. So uh, our funding mechanism, the way that we develop uh, standards and the way that we develop qualifications is built entirely around employers. And so it's done in consultation with them. Um, we're really the facilitators of their need. So we work with them to understand what their current needs are and what their emerging needs are in the future, and then work with them for them to help them define their own standards and what is required. So that's the biggest strength, I think. Um, also, how we involve them at such an early stage in our formal education. So having employers involved in primary and secondary education to go in and talk directly to pupils about what it is that they want to do in the future and what path they need to take potentially academically or from a skills point of view to meet their needs as employers in the future. Um, we do a huge amount of work with trying to inspire young people into STEM. So STEM for us is science, technology, engineering and manufacturing. Uh, we have a skill shortage in the UK in that area as we uh, move more into uh, a skilled workforce. And so we have things like the Bloodhound Project in the UK where we have um, very high profile initiatives which we get a large number of employers and a large number of education providers behind working together to try and inspire the next generation to go into those really important areas for us. So um, they, they work hand in glove. The UK uh, skills environment and employers are totally in coordination with each other. Yes, um, we currently are working with uh, the Oman um, uh, government, the Ministry of Manpower in Oman. Um, we're working with the oil and gas sector there to help them define their own national occupational standards. So in doing that, what that gives um, the Oman um, industry, the, the oil and gas industry in Oman, is a common taxonomy, a common language which they can use across all of their uh, various organisations uh, in that sector to say an individual is qualified and if they're qualified in one organisation, that's a transferable skill to go into another organisation. So by defining those standards very clearly, we're helping uh, not just to define the generation now who are working, but also uh, to be able to go into their formal education system and say, these are the skills which you need to prepare people for. Um, so uh, that would be one example. A second example would be where we work with a, a large engineering manufacturer. We work with Jaguar Land Rover uh, in China, where... Um, uh, Jaguar Land Rover are building a new model of Jaguar Land Rover in China and helping them make sure that the local uh, TVET system, the local training um, and vocational education and training system, is equipped to be able to deliver those plants, those Jaguar Land Rover plants in China with the right skilled people. Uh, and that becomes a tripartite arrangement between Jaguar Land Rover as an employer, the local education system uh, in China, and uh, us as the, as the bastions of those uh, skills uh, in the UK, working together to be able to help each of those organisations improve. Communication uh, is, the, is the key part of that, which is uh, uh, sometimes underrated. Um, it's about being able to spend the time and understand not just the symptoms of what an organisation is trying to do, but actually the, the core of, um, of the challenges they face. 
Um, so, for instance, um, we might go and talk to an organization about their challenges with recruitment, uh, recruiting skilled people to do that, but that's very often just a byproduct of a larger problem. So it's working really closely with the employer to look at the core roots of what it is they're trying to achieve. It's also about building in some form of longevity. So um, solving problems of today, um, there are jobs which people are needed to be trained for at the moment, but those jobs won't exist in 10 or 15 years' time. So it's working with an organization to understand not just what their challenges are tactically at the moment, but what their challenges might be uh, in the future, and whether that then becomes about repurposing existing staff, or whether it's about recruiting uh, new staff and how that training works. Being able to really understand their needs is, is critical. The other is being able to align them to their local education providers. So one of the examples we have here in the UK, uh, we have a, um, a product called the STEM Exchange, which is a website which is um, dedicated to being able to allow employers and their local education providers to interact with each other um, and understand how um, they can gain uh, mutual benefit on both sides. Um, so one of the challenges is encouraging employers to get involved um, in this. Um, and there, there are a number of ways. At, at one end of the spectrum, we work with um, uh, some different countries who are uh, make it compulsory for organizations to be involved. So it actually becomes part of statute and uh, part of regulation to say that they have to contribute towards skills development. Um, at the other end is really just the more philosophical approach that as an organization, um, it's in your benefit from a bottom line point of view to be involved in TVET and skills. Um, so being able to make sure that you're a sustainable business in the future, it should be self-fulfilling. And then there are mechanisms in the middle. So we try to work with organizations to look at individual rewards. So how can you be, by being involved directly in this, what are the downstream benefits to you as an organization? It really is um, a, a sales job from the education system's point of view to get the employers to be involved. Okay, so um, the UK Skills Federation uh, brings together the sex skills councils across the UK. Uh, one of the mechanisms that we do that with is uh, through our website, which is www.ukskills.org, um, where uh, our international partners are able to go and find out exactly in detail what it is that we do and what the services that we can provide are.